Hello, hello. Let me get you up on screen real quick here. Let me pause you. Okay. <laughs> hello. Uh, hey. Let me get your uh, your name and everything up on screen. So you uh, are officially rebranded to Xliax. Lexi. Yes, I like that pronunciation. It's fun. I, I, sorry, that's I, I'm doing no, the no, no. Like, Bruce, <laughs> I, Bruce I, Almighty. For a really long like, time after. After I changed, everyone asked how to pronounce it, and I told them that watching them struggle is way more fun than telling them anything. So, <laughs> and pronouns, she, her, she, correct? her. Okay. Yeah, excellent. All right, just gonna make sure we have your name, your stream, everything up on here. Uh, preferred socials probably Twitch, right? Uh, yeah, Twitch and Twitter, whichever one you want to pick. There, Twitter is probably where I'm more active, but Twitch is for the the real content. <laughs> Hold on one second. Um, okay. Wait, it's, is it? Oh, God. How do the Twitter links work? Jesus fucking Christ. My brain. Is it? Is it just slash forward slash? Yeah, it is. Okay, there's no yeah. in, in there. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get this. All right. So I have like, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to get to talk with you. Um, I know this is going to come off as mega tacky and mega cringe, but um, I <laughs> have been a big fan of yours um, for Aww. quite some time. Um, and in fact, um, when I first was like, oh shit, we got some real talent in this Lexi <laughs> right here, um, was in the conversation, uh, the long, probably long now buried to history conversation you had with Vosh about, uh, I think it was the thought slime drama or something along those lines. And I was so impressed with <laughs> how well you handled, like how expertly you approached that conversation that I was like, oh shit, and I've been, uh, I've been a uh, secret quiet simp for some time. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, very happy to have you on. Um, let me just here make sure that I got the guest command. Um, wait, uh, mods, can one of you set up a guest command for Lexi with all the socials? Be amazing if uh, Gina, if you could do that, that'd be um. incredible. Um, do you do you YouTube also? No, this is not the distributist. No. Clear the no. That's this no. Lexi is not the distributist. <laughs> is not that, that wild Christian dude? Um. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you. <laughs> listen. I just did you did you happen to see my conversation with him from the other day? I didn't. Okay. How was it was it? Very. Um. I feel like you would like it. I feel like you would appreciate okay. it. Some of our compatriots perhaps would not. It was um as the uh as the the kids on the internet like to say nerd shit. Um. Yeah. <laughs> we got into a really complicated um needlessly complicated to be completely honest but of course i have fun with needlessly complicated things um sure. but a needlessly comp uh complicated discussion about different like social constructs different types of social constructs why it is it can be morally and philosophically consistent to say that i don't believe that there's a way to politely doubt someone's gender identity while it is potentially um possible to come up with a polite way or an acceptable way to challenge someone's ideological predilections um and yeah i mean i imagine that, that it seems like right like like and to keep in mind that the the, the like there was the, the thing that blew my mind about this was that ultimately it hinged on whether it was polite or not and i'm like well you're asking me my opinion on whether it's polite or not. And and multiple times in this conversation, I told him, listen, if you just want to talk about whether you think I'm a man or a woman or whatever, then okay. Like, I'm not scared mm -hmm. of that conversation. Let's let's do it. I, I'm a debatey bitch. I do this all the time. I'm, I'm comfortable <laughs> in blood. And he's like, well, no, 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 no. And he kept backing off from it. And then at the end, he dropped a spicy meme. After like two hours of, of like pussyfooting around this hours? oh okay, it was long yeah. as fuck <laughs> yeah i mean i told you it's nerd shit um but like after like two hours we finally got to the end and he's like do you know he's like you know we've been talking about this gender thing this whole time and um you know what the traditionalist catholic position on um gender is and i mean i have an idea but i was like no i i don't actually why don't you tell me since you're the traditionalist catholic he's like well i don't think i need to you can look it up for yourself bye and hangs up <laughs> and i'm like i fucking knew it he just wanted to tell me i'm going to hell for being a degenerate or something. <laughs> this whole conversation like was like a giant dance around and I called it like 10 minutes in 
and yet we still went on for like two hours because I just wanted to I just wanted to tease it all out. You know, it's it's yeah, very sure. satisfying. Yeah, it's like um, it sounds like a yeah. So it was a fun <laughs> conversation. Um, he then one thing that really weirded me out was he then posted it to his own Twitter under like a subtitle saying, "Oh, I had a, a conversation with Demon Mama, <laughs> in which we discussed the points of." possible points of agreement between the far right and far left i'm like what <laughs> we never we never talked about that not even once <laughs> we never That's and it was fun. it was my it was mind blowing so um nonetheless i imagine that our conversation today will be galaxies more productive than that conversation was <laughs> although i did have a good time with it i'm going to have a good time with this conversation for a very different reason um also i love your mug here, yeah. um do you like my Thank mug you. Look, at, look at my mug oh i i do like your mug it's, it's cute pink pink wug mug i i i wish i could say that i got my one ring mug to talk about lord of the rings but this is literally all that i drink out of so i mean if i'm drinking coffee this is all i'm drinking out of so it looks like I'm a, just like a nice there. hefty mug which is it like is. my thing yeah i got this one in like this is like I, it's hard to tell on camera but it's like almost as big as my head it's big it's a big yeah. one yeah. trust me i got it <laughs> yeah yeah there we go exactly um hell yeah so okay cool so before we get really too far into this uh, and and blabbing about all kinds of stuff, let's <laughs> let's let's hit the the audience. A lot of people here are not familiar with you. Please sure. introduce yourself to them and give us your thing. Give us your deal. Okay. So, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna correct you a little. Sure. Um, but I'll get to that. Okay. I'm uh, I'm Lexi, also known as Exilix or however the fuck you want to pronounce that word. Um. And, and, uh, I am, I previously had pseudo identifications as anarchy, you know, anarchist, Marxist, something like that. And I, I, I still believe in a lot of things from both of those categories there, but I don't feel comfortable calling myself either of them. Okay. I think our current state of just about everything is pretty fucked and True. i am interested in figuring out how to not make it like that anymore Amazing. um and i i pull a lot of stuff from from various anarchists and, and marxists on on what to do next <laughs> fantastic i mean then you and i have something in common with that um i am frequently asked oh well what do you describe yourself you're like an anarchist or what are you some kind of com communist or whatever and i say well i mean i think it would probably be fair to classify me somewhere in communist but i always describe myself as a lefty with anarchist leanings and sure. i feel like that is usually broad enough for people to get an idea of my general beliefs without um encouraging them to make assumptions if that makes sense no <laughs> i totally to get the what case. You're yeah um so yeah uh apologies for um for no, no, uh, no. declaring you as an anarchist outright no it's but, okay i won't call i will i will half jokingly and half because it does describe some of my views call myself an anarchist still um it it's mostly just because i i believe oh god if we're gonna really quick did you want to talk about the anarchy stuff first do you want to talk about the tolkien stuff I mean, first? i didn't know how you wanted to separate well, it but here's the thing we can do whatever you're feeling like because um a bit later, I've reserved us a solid, at least one and a half hour for just us to talk. And then I mentioned um, in our DMs that Song yeah, yeah. Soul, um, another um, streamer, um, was really like wanting to like get anarchy. And I was like, I don't like I'm not as good at that as Lexi is. Like I, I just am not. And so um, I was like, well, why don't you just come on and talk to Lexi, and I'll just kind of like hover and and comment and give my thoughts and whatever you know i just wanted to facilitate that little yeah sure so yeah it should be pretty awesome and i think it'll be very beneficial for the audience so we can go from talking about anarchy to talking about lord of the rings talking about anarchy again <laughs> give people like a nice change up i'm cool with whatever but sure. if you want to like jump right into lord of the Rings stuff i promise you i made a whole document of questions both for you on anarchy issues and for lord of the Rings stuff because you know okay i want to get it going somewhere. um well in that case uh i guess if we're leaving it up like that um i would say if we're going to pull someone on later i feel like that should uh follow at least a little bit of the discussion on anarchy so right. let's start with lord of the rings let's what start do you with have lord of the rings. for me or okay. tolkien in general all right i'll so... do my best it's been a little bit since i've read but i'll do my best for you okay excellent so we have a quite a diverse audience here. We have when it comes mm -hmm. to the Lord of the Rings. 
We have Lord of the Rings fans in the audience. We have people who couldn't finish the books. We have people who have only seen the movies and have their own thoughts about the movies. We've got a, a very broad spectrum of people who are who have feelings about Lord of the Rings. Now, for myself, I am a massive Lord of the Rings fan. Um, like, Lord of the Rings was one... I think it was the second, like, big fantasy universe I ever dipped into. And the first one that I ever really dipped into was um, Redwall, if you're familiar with Redwall. Um, oh. What's that? I have a feeling you'd really love it. Um, it's this absolutely wonderful, like, it, I guess it's for children, but it deals with a lot of m mature themes. And it, it's basically, it's this book about um, mice and their little warriors and they have friends and they live in an abbey called Redwall. And originally, like, you kind of get this impression that, like, oh, they're like mice with their own society inside of, like, a, a an abandoned human world. But then over time, it's more like, well, maybe there aren't humans. It, it, it's kind of confusing. But the first book okay. takes place in, like, there are these mice that live in this giant abbey, and they've made a society there, and there's all this drama that happens. Um, and it's amazing. Um, like, Wait, this is – I'm sorry. Can you, yeah. can you finish that? Sure. No. No, go for it. I was just going to ask, is this in any way related to um, – oh, my God. What is it called? I just had it. The Tale of Despero. Um, it came out around a similar time, but I don't know okay. if they have okay. any shared inspiration. Um, okay. um, Brian Jakes was the author of the Redwall series, which is expansive at this point. And, um, he had a little bit of a, um, Bill Watterson, you know, the, the Calvin and Hobbes guy. Like <laughs> he was very, like he, he was very careful about merchandising it and like really wanted it to be this like, you know, wholesome universe. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah and yeah. And as a result, it, it still to this day has a very um, concrete place in my heart as like this wholesome tale that's got like n little mice nights and the storytelling was great. <laughs> I mean, I remember the first book that ever like made me bawl my eyes out was Martin the Warrior, which is um, the second or third book in the series. It's about like the father, the, the like not the father, but like the ancestor of one of the characters in the book. Uh, in mm -hmm. the first book, Redwall. And um, it was just heart-wrenching. I remember crying on the bus on the way home from school because I was just like, no, like, how could you do this to my favorite mouse character? Like, you know what I mean? So it was like yeah. um, very, an incredible series. Um, I, I I haven't read it in years now, but I have a feeling that they would hold up really well if you are a reading lover. So, um, yeah, okay. but yeah, um, that's kind of a, a total tangent. But the fact of the matter is uh, <laughs> that was the first fantasy universe I ever really delved into. And very shortly afterwards, I was told, well, if you like Redwall, you should read the OG fantasy, Lord of the Rings. Uh -huh. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to read it. And I started reading it. And then my best friend's uncle took me to go see the movie in the theaters. And I didn't even know the movie was going to come out. Like I was like, what? Right, the Lord right. of the Rings movie? What the fuck? Like I like it felt really cool. And so I was like, from there on, I was just locked into Lord of the Rings. And I've like been a, a massive fan of the series. Played until very recently, nearly every game, seen nearly every film rendition, animated rendition that you can imagine. Um, used to, I mean, to the point where like me and my friends like used to make hobbit outfits and make put find a big leaf in the woods and put lemboss bread that we made in and carry it on like this kind of stuff like that level of That's cute. Uh, of shit and uh, like half of the movies that I made when I was a kid on on a shitty camcorder that my dad had were like we used just stolen music from the um Lord of the Rings films and stuff um so that's the reason like I was so excited to find out that you have like an awesome amount of knowledge about the lore yeah so that guy though howard shore the guy who did the mm -hmm. the the i mean the, the, he's an incredible composer yeah. like some of that music is like insane so good i i love the way I love i love they're just so good it, it's, it's an excellent excellent movie fantasy soundtrack that's all oh, it's amazing that, but... it's like quintessential like they really yeah. did they really nailed it i mean that the cool thing about the movies is and again there's like a lot of i i know you're being a Lord of the Rings fan, I'm sure you're you're familiar with the endless discourse that still proceeds to this day about movies and movie superiority versus book superiority. And like, oh yeah, sure, I don't, of course. I I I have you're ascended different. beyond that these days. Yeah, like, they're their own works. You know what I mean? But I like, they're know. supposed to be. Like, I don't want to see a book one to one to a movie because Terrible. there's a bunch of shit in the book that, I, like, the whole point of a movie and the way that you write, like, like film a movie is to focus on the things that are important, like super core to the story. 
and to to have them you know like reappear so that you feel like like you're you're you've understood something about that world and stuff but no no like that's not what books do books give you a shit ton of information and you just hold on to it as best you can yeah, yeah exactly i mean they're different yeah they're different mediums but they can convey similar spirit and it's, oh, totally. i do think there's an interest there's there's something interesting in comparing and contrasting um something i found really interesting was that like that felt like it didn't happen very much in the discourse around the hobbit movies and i wonder if that's not just like a, a, a further indictment of those movies in my opinion um because like the hobbit movies were like it's almost like they were so far from the original text that nobody even bothered trying to draw comparisons at all i barely heard yeah. anyone be like oh this isn't like in the book i was just like they just didn't even try <laughs> like it was just yeah like, no oh, it's whatever. pretty pretty significantly different yeah i have nothing but negative thoughts about the the <laughs> hobbit movies pretty much there's a few things i thought were kind of cute yeah, and i about. really like the first half of the first movie and that's yeah, about it <laughs> okay well i mean it did have that absolute banger um the soundtrack was still reasonably still good pretty pretty yeah, good yeah pretty i was good. okay the, the, the misty lot mountains of, was good i'm i'm with you there a lot of uh reusing it's like oh i can't even go that it's deep it's incredible good. so incredible <laughs> like oh my god i love it um yeah and then there was like the flight tossing and all that fun shit and whatever that was kind of fun um yeah so yeah well uh okay so without getting off onto the hobbit let's <laughs> Let's talk about Lord of the Rings. So, uh, for again, for everyone who doesn't know what Lord of the Rings is, it's the you know possibly the quintessential fantasy text of of the last century. It basically every single fantasy universe you can imagine of pulls a fuckload from the Lord of the Rings, um, and some do it really well, some do it really poorly. Um, it's it's incredible that it is actually like deeply deeply influential in that way and for good reason so um you should i be mean able tolkien's to whole yeah go sorry ahead. no go for I it say, tolkien's whole goal was to 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 i mean whole yeah. lots of goals one of the larger goals of tolkien was to um introduce fantasy to adults he he, he wanted adults to like recognize that these could be stories for them and that it, they, they weren't relegated to you know little children's tales with little easy morals that like you could tell something big and important with them yeah and 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 also like i think it's it's telling how much commitment there was to to that sort of vision of his of his universe where every corner of the world is so full of 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 tidbits and and like i don't know it it gives you that like reading lord of the rings gives you a a window into the mind of like people who are creationists you know what i mean like mm -hmm. where you can see like oh the master's touch all across these little pieces and it's like and it, but in a much more wholesome way that doesn't involve the 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 power bullshit that's in a lot of organized religion but it you know i grew up christian so of course like that was it was like very accessible to me in that way it was a mythology that helped me think about and grow and um actually um you know got me thinking about a lot of things in different ways than i had been taught originally so a very valuable book in my opinion in a lot of ways um but from here on out everyone i'm sorry but it's going to be lore questions so it's going to be a little bit for the lord of the rings fans but you might have fun so stick around and we're going to talk about some politics afterwards as well um so here's the thing i have a couple of core questions but okay. before i do mine i feel like it would be valuable to go over some of the things we talked about in our thread on Twitter the other night, which was a fun thread as hell, but nobody saw it because okay. you know that's how that's what happens when you have a three a.m. Twitter conversation. <laughs> um, so I'll re reiterate my question, knowing the answer. I know the answer to this question, but you all in chat don't. What are you the most frustrating like? uh big brain nitpicks that you hear about lord of the rings like you know like the cinema sin style like wow why didn't they do that what are those ones and what are the actual answers uh so the ones i think the ones that i gave there the classic one is why didn't the eagles take the ring or frodo but they usually say the ring yeah. to to mount doom and the answer is because mostly the rings have their own or the rings the eagles have their own shit to do they're they're great powerful creatures and they've 
They got plans already, okay? They've got plans. Gandalf can't just summon them whenever. They're not summoned by that little moth from the movies. No, no, no. Gandalf just goes and says, hello, please help me. And they say, okay, we're not busy right now. And then they decide to help sometimes. But the more important thing is that every great... So the ring. We have to talk about the ring for a hot second. Let's I didn't get too big into this, but the ring um, is part of Sauron. Sauron's soul is... Part of it is in the ring and the ring is only wieldable by powerful people. Um, so like Galadriel at one point wants the ring and she would be able to use it. Um, Gandalf wants it sort of, but also knows that through him, it would do terrible things. That's the classic line from it that, because that's what the ring does. The ring corrupts it's star on soul it's gonna it's a little wicked it's got some shit in it mm. um and and so people like humans and hobbits being not powerful and not humans desire but hobbits not desiring very much means that the ring um is is it, it's all it does to them is sort of push them into the wraith world which is why you turn invisible with it other people would be able to wear it like like people so people like gandalf are um they're like lesser angels essentially he's not like a guy who figured out how to do some spells he's a supernatural being of the 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 the, the, the tolkien universe um like he a is god-like a, um, race yeah so if we want to god we're already getting kind of deep so it's okay that's um, what we're here for the very beginning of the cimmerillion reads very much like the beginning of the Bible. It is a creation story. So first things first, there's God. God is, in this universe, is Eru Iluvatar. And Eru Iluvatar is just hanging out when before time existed and before things existed. And that's a boring world. So what you do is you create people to hang out with. And who he creates are the angels. They're called the Einar. Um, and um, he teaches the Einar to sing and so the very first thing they do is sing together and and as they sing together um they don't know it at first but as they sing together they're creating the world they're creating the universe um it's mostly we're focused on earth but like so like different valar um sorry the einar are separated into two groups You've got your Valar, those are your big boys, and you've got your Maiar, those are your like lesser angels. And the Valar um, kind of stepped into their creation after they created it, essentially. Um, they all did, sort of. But yeah, so the Einar sang a song and it created the world, but there was one guy and he's our Satan figure. Um, he's, you know, one. fallen one. He's smartest, strongest, you know, whatever. He's he's our Satan figure. And he wants to create some cool stuff and not being part of the harmony of everyone else, he sort of sings his own theme. So the original songs, song, it's sort of divided into three themes. And one of the themes, um, the first one is stopped when they notice the discordant tone coming from Melkor. Um, and That's the bad guy. That's Melkor. the back. Sorry, I didn't yeah. say his name. Melkor is his name. He's yeah. the he's the Satan figure. Melkor sings a little discordantly because he wants his own shit. He's making he's he's a little more like I, I'm my own thing. I'm not part of this whole little thing you got going on. I'm me. Exactly. It's a very he, rebellious, he's got a, kind a very of... rebellious independent streak, which right. isn't. And now now here's another little question to play off of this. Sure, is that within the Tolkien universe considered necessarily a bad thing? Just on its own. The rebellious nature, no. Um, but what he was doing, not being the will of Eru Iluvatar, a little bit. Okay. It's creating it's a all of the... little bit of the Christian, like... Yes, it's yeah. totally... Yes, tons of that. It, he's literally creating... So if we go through the different Valar, the different mm. um, great angels, um, they were all creating different pieces. So... Some of them were creating like, well, usually one of them was creating like all of the plants and animals on the earth. 
that one also created the Ents. Um, one of them created the dwarves. One of them created um, grief and sadness in the world. Okay. Um, but but Melkor and grief, notice, is not one of the wrong things. Mm-hmm. That's actually like totally on. Like we were ready. That was we planned that. Um, but Melkor is like creating the dark sick shit the 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 murder uh, and and torture uh, and pain and i wish i remembered uh the actual specifics but the real fucked shit the fucked shit yeah. um he did want the inner fire baru anyways um what was the original question fuck we were so we were far talking away from about that. that's gandalf. fine that's fine we were, we were so talking about <laughs> what happens when someone like gandalf gandalf being Essentially, we can assume he's like a lesser angel or a demigod yes. or something along those lines. Yeah. What happens when someone like him picks up the ring and why that would prevent the eagles from using the, from picking up the ring? The as well. eagles, that's exactly what we're talking about. I got so far off on that. It's fine. This is, this is a lore a deep dive. Everybody knows um, what they came here for. So, <laughs> um, so uh, Gandalf in, in taking, um, or if he would take the ring and the, the eagles, the, the ring would, um, would be utilizable by them. Um, this is something that a lot of like the humans don't realize. So if you remember, um, like in the movies, uh, there's the there's the meeting um, uh, where they form the fellowship at Rivendell, mm-hmm. and and um, Boromir is like, no, 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 this is a gift. We should use this. We should fight. You know, use it. Like fight with it. And then uh, Denethor thinks the same thing. His father. He thinks like oh, you know, we would be able to use this in our great fight against Sauron, but that's exactly the kind of shit that Sauron wants. Sauron wants you to to use the ring and bring it closer to him, essentially, because you, you can't control that as a normal person in the world. Right. Um, you have to be a very powerful being. So Sauron is on, like, the same level as, like, um, of angel hierarchy as Gandalf, um, like they are, Very they're the powerful. same kinds of being. They're super powerful. Sauron is like kind of weirdly powerful. He's like an extra powerful lesser angel. Um, Sauron being to tie this back around, the the most loyal servant of Melkor. So the that's their bad. relationship. The big bad, right? Yeah. So Sauron's like the little mini big bad. <laughs> Satan Junior, I think is what uh silent yeah. in my chat described <laughs> described Sauron as. Sauron is, yeah. is, is Satan Junior. He's baby Satan. Lil Basically. Satan. <laughs> um so the questions about like who should can take the ring are very questionable. Like that's the whole thing. Uh, it's like it it's a very dark and corroding force and also everyone want like it 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 makes you want to touch it. So like you are constantly wanting it and also it makes you feel like shit and it's a weird combination of things mm-hmm. um what was i it also sort of opens you to um his will right um cuz like that's something that i think happened largely with the ring wraiths right is that they were ultimately like sort of subsumed by his personality so i don't think the one so like okay so the the ring kind of like kind of speaks to you um but more importantly than that um the one that the way that i know it and it might be a little different is that the one ring is um the conduit by which the other rings are um okay i have to say it like this sauron in the beginning the beginning in the second age second age second age um taught a elf he disguised himself as an elf and taught an elf uh Celebrimbor how to make rings of power Celebrimbor for the record is what everybody voted was the nerdiest character in Lord of the Rings (laughs) so (laughs) yeah so he 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 is uh Sauron teaches him how to make the rings and unbeknownst to him in the creation of the rings of power um he adds in a way to kind of get into everyone's brain they sort of act as like a like a they 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 bring your defenses down your mental defenses down um so sauron's ring sort of focuses his power and all the other rings sort of like 
fuck with everyone else's like mental power. And in the beginning, Sauron didn't actually make the rings of power. He just taught Celebrimbor how, and Celebrimbor, Celebrimbor made the lesser rings. And then he made three special specific rings. Um, Gandalf has one, I think. Um, Galadriel, I think. Yeah, I think Galadriel has one. Yeah. And I don't remember who has the last one. I think Elrond. Was it Elrond? It seems, yeah, I think it was seems Elrond. right, but I don't remember, actually. Because yeah, he had it in um, uh, Rivendell, and then she had it in um, Lothlorien. I think. Right. Um, yeah, and then. But Gandalf has the third one. Yeah, Gandalf's got the third. Yeah, one. Gandalf, Gladriel, and Elrond. Um, see, I see. I have a decent amount of lore got, knowledge you too. Got Not as much, um, but still. Uh, he uh, when the when 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 Sauron originally put on his ring, um, and attempted to like sway the minds of others, uh, they all took off their rings. All the elves who had them, because the elves were the only ones who had them. Celebrimbor was an elf, and he made them for other elves. And he said, "Elves, what's up? We're cool. We've got our rings. We're hanging out." And then they all took off their rings when they realized what Sauron was doing. And Sauron was like, "Well, shit. Now my plan's not going to work." And so Sauron goes and he. Uh, he he captures Celebrimbor and to tortures him until he says where all the, the rings of power are. And then Sauron takes the rings and distributes them to, to you know, the races Dwarves accordingly. And, yeah. And humans, et cetera, et cetera. Overlooking, exactly. mind you, chat, he overlooks the simple hobbits. He didn't think they were important enough to give a ring. Much to his, his demise <laughs> later on. <laughs> So yeah, um, these rings are basically like I mean, think you you've played a fantasy game, you know what a powerful mm -hmm. ring is. You put it on, it buffs your stats, you get to do cool shit with it. Um exactly what seems to, it's sometimes up in the air, but that's all right. Um like that's that's part of the fun of of fantasy. Um So, yeah. to go super super back, my big problem, my my fucking the the the, the, the eagles, talking the eagles. about the eagles and why you why they can't just take the ring and drop it in like even if they weren't busy and even if they weren't powerful beings the whole whole thing is like there's nazgul there's the eye of sauron like mordor sucks like mordor like he's constantly watching he sees everything there yeah the fell he, beasts which are the things that he, the, the you know the ring the, race they they fly on those black dragon things those are fell beasts. And guess what? They don't have the only fell beasts either. There's like a fuckload <laughs> of them living in the mountains of Mordor. Like a hell, like a ton of them. So um, they're not... The eagles flying it in just wouldn't have worked. It's just not how that goes. Um, but I think that's my most frustrating thing. Uh, the, the people... Misconception, I suppose. Um, I don't know if I said another one. I feel like I said another there one in the Twitter thread. And it was, uh, but I don't remember it was, what I said. It was, why doesn't Gandalf just shoot more people with the lasers? Oh, yeah. Um, which is, um, so, I don't want to, we can go a lot of lore or a little lore. Um, Let's just do a little lore for now, and then we'll go into the deeper stuff lore. as we go on. Yeah. So, um, Gandalf, on his way, went, so when... When the Astari, and the Astari are the wizards, when the Astari um, came to Middle-earth, um, they were tasked, remember, because they're like angels, they were they were told specifically, hey, uh, your job here is not to control the world, um, it's not to force people into whatever, your job is purely to, to, to act as sort of guides. You have to disguise yourself, you have mortal bodies, you know, you, you have, you know, mortal in the sense that if you get stabbed, it hurts. And then you can also die that way. But And you can they eat, don't... but you might be able to come back. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, death is supposed to be the end for them. Gandalf is a special case that isn't actually explained. And I, we assume that it's Arrow Iluvatar who brings him back as the White Wizard. Okay. There's some, some stuff he about... Gets a, he gets a one cheat rule. So, like, in the movies, they don't say it. But in the movies... Saruman stops being the white wizard. He thinks he has like surpassed the normal wizard colors and he calls himself Saruman the many colored. Like he's got like a rainbow robe and stuff. He's like, he's, he, he thinks that he's powerful enough and he wants the ring so that he can, you know, stop Sauron. He's the one, yeah, he's the rainbow wizard. He thinks he's super cool. And so they're not being a white wizard anymore. Gandalf sort of retakes that form, but 
They were all told their job is not to, uh, yeah, not to dominate, not to control, not to use their powers in like significant ways. Um, and so Gandalf has to act, you know, accordingly. Like they're, they're angels; they can do more than they show. Um, yeah. Basically, so they're not supposed to do what happened in The Hobbit. The wizard, if you've seen The Hobbit movies, there's this part where all the wizards are jumping around like Yoda with a lightsaber and they're like shooting <laughs> beams of energy at each other. And it's like, dun, 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 you know, like Star Wars shit. Um, you're not supposed to do that as a wizard. You're supposed to keep it on the down low. You know, you can amaze the mortals sometimes by lighting a pine cone on fire or whatever to like inspire them to action or whatever. Um, and occasionally like you might be able to use your powers to stop something terrible from happening. Like, I don't know that part in the movie where, you know, Saruman's like making an avalanche happen and Gandalf's like, I'll try and make the avalanche not happen as bad. You could do that. Stuff. <laughs> Is that right? Is that accurate? That's pretty, that's pretty much accurate. Yeah. There you we go. Got to keep it on the super DL. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't show off too much. No, no laser bolts or anything. Precisely. Yeah. It'd be too um, much. Their heads would blow up. Yeah. A little, a little bit. Um, I feel like I was going to say something and now I don't remember. Yeah, so that's the reason why, though. That that was that that more or less yeah. answers the question. That's why Gandalf doesn't just shoot lasers everywhere. I mean, he could probably fuck everyone's shit up if he really wanted to, but it would be kind of lame to do that, and also it would totally screw up the balance of the world. Yeah, so I mean, the says, whole job. Uh, Silent says wizards aren't supposed to hard carry. They're supposed to encourage the mortal races to fix their own problems. Exactly. You got it. Yeah. And mostly they're there to to in fixing the problems. The problem that they're mostly referring to is Sauron. That mm -hmm. Melkor being defeated and cast into the void, um, and Sauron returning essentially. Um, they they knew that Sauron would consolidate his his power, and the goal is hey you got to make the people actually care about something. And there's a big thing in Lord of the Rings about, okay, again, I don't want to go too deep. Um, so all of the Valar, the big angels, the cool angels, the great angels, um, they were all part of creating different pieces of the world. And so a couple of like sentient races got created this way. Um, the eagles got created that way. The ends got created that way. Um, the, 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 uh, what's the other one I was going to say? Um, the dwarves got created that way, but, um, Eru Iluvatar is, he wants men and elves to be special. He's like, these are mine. I'm going to make these. You guys don't touch these. These are mine. And he creates them and he kind of plays sort of favorites and he likes humans a little bit more. And so he gives them like, um, he gives them shorter lives, death, uh, uh, and, and they've got a lot of like will. That's mm. one of the big things about humans, man, in this story is that they've got, they've got, yeah, like, and so it's common um, to, it's kind of common in the stories that it's really hard to convince anyone else to do anything. Like the people are like the man are the one who who try to guide like the guide uh just get shit done like that's what they want they want to get shit done and want to build they want to everyone conquer, else is, they want to do all that shit right and and so like all the other beings elves included are sort of like tied to nature itself um and it's why it's really hard to get them to do anything they're just kind of like whatever happens how we're hanging out we're cool we're good and that's um yeah the hobbits want to eat lunch and go to sleep well the hobbits are <laughs> technically men but yes that is what they want to do <laughs> um is there any other yeah What's the other so basically the 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 with the the humans are are very industrious but perhaps a mm -hmm. little little headstrong and careless um the other oh. races are like well you know we live forever there's no rush um, ants are like with real no rush. They're just like what the <laughs> fuck ever. They're like we're gonna yeah. sleep for six sixty years and then we'll wake up and all of our wives are gonna be gone and all that shit. Like I mean, so yeah, varying levels. And that was actually another question I wanted to, to hit you with. Mm -hmm. This one is a little bit less deep lore, I think, but I think a lot of people who are fans of Lord of the Rings would love to know the answer to this if you've got it. 
What do we know about the Entwives? Where the fuck are they, and why the fuck did they leave in the first place? Oh, I don't think that I don't think we know. If, no, if no it's answer. out there, I certainly don't know. But I'm pretty sure, like, well, all we know is that they were lost. That like we they literally can't find them. Like I think that's I think that's all the Shit, information. We lost we really our did. wives. Yeah, Imagine like they just don't know where they are. Wives, Chad, what the I, fuck? Oh, uh, what's up with the Numenorians? Um, they okay. So here's a weird thing. Remember, you know, in the movies, there's Aragorn, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and Aragorn really likes that elf chick Arwen. Um, but they're kind of related. Um, I, and it's by a pretty significant, um, uh, it's by a pretty significant, like, I don't know, there's like cousins X amount of times removed. Like, it's a pretty significant line. Okay. But he's like related to Elrond and her, and they're all related to um, one of the Valar. So the Valar at one point got with some of the super ancient, like first age elves. Oh um, shit. And Numenorians are like a man line off of that, off so of that like weird elf God line. So it's like fucks elf, elf. Elf God hybrid so at some point fucks human, and then there's like supermen, like Basically, the Numenorians. They're like, yeah, super old and kind of granted a weird gift of um, leading, I would okay. say, which is kind of strange. So, like, for weird, example, yeah. Num Numenoria, uh, uh, Numenor, not Numenor, Numenor existed, and um, and after some shit, after the people, after Numenorians fucked too hard and did too much the, the, <laughs> they they sank Numenor uh, Numenor pretty sure they sank it yeah and some Numenorians Damn. went to Middle Earth um, and founded Gondor and something to the south of Gondor I don't remember Rohan? so like uh, not Rohan no, Rohan, um, okay. uh, Rohan I mean, it doesn't matter um, not oh, it has another name I don't remember what it is um, doesn't matter uh, two two big kingdom areas. They went and founded some stuff, um, and that's why you know Aragorn, being a, a descendant of the 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 line of Numenor, is also kind of heir important. to the throne of Gondor, and also kind of important. Yeah. Is she going to talk about the Black Numenorean? I don't know too much about the Black Numenoreans, honestly. There is a question I have on my list that that gets a little political. We'll probably save that for oh. the end so we can. Oh, I'm 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 it. excited for it. Okay, so what here's do you have the, here's the next question though that I have. All right, this is another one that I think a lot of people will know. I I know some of this, but mm -hmm. um, I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. So give us the fucking skinny on Bombadil if you can. So how strong is he? What's he? Uh, what are his motives? And is do you know the meme theory about Bombadil? Uh, about him being a nudist? No, 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 not no. that one. The one about, <laughs> I mean, just... <laughs> possibly, I mean, sure, but um, but like the one about him being like uh, a, 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 an embodiment of Melkor. Of, yeah, yeah. Of Melkor? Yeah, that's what I've heard. And now, now I read this massive theory at okay. one point on online. Maybe you don't know about it, but the idea is that like um, there's numerous references to like um, how powerful he is, and like that 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 the the old woods that that he resides in is like deeply deeply evil in like a way that almost nowhere else short of mordor <laughs> is and so i want like and people posit well maybe then if that if that makes sense if he can control this forest and it's this deeply evil forest well then he surely must be himself either a great good or a great evil but he's definitely not a great good and gandalf doesn't seem to trust him very much so that's a little strange but anyway if you got bombadil so, stuff okay my bombadil take isn't very spicy. It's fine. Um, and I I mostly go with he is basically just a um oh my god what is that word like oh my god I can't believe I'm forgetting this word um it's okay. he's a he's a uh, an anomaly okay like his he 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 doesn't fit into any of the rules he's a little weird he's very strange he's confusing and he has the ring at one point and it doesn't do anything like it's a very confusing thing like i, I like everyone else i think turns invisible when they wear it um men and uh, uh uh hobbits and stuff Sorry. they're pushed into the wraith world but he's like he's good he just 
He just stands there and takes it. Like he's fine. Okay. Nothing happens to him. He's, pretty... he's a very strange, I think I've leaned closer to some pseudo Eru Iluvatar. Okay, like he's actually say, like okay. a God weird God, but like, I don't even know if that's fair because he really is just an anomaly. I mean, he's pretty he's... good in the Lord of the Rings video games. I know he can shoot. <laughs> um, he can shoot big waves out that knock people all over the place, and he dances around and goes oh, ho, 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 and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> so maybe he's just that. Maybe that's maybe that was closer to the truth all along. Maybe I. I really don't think. I. I don't believe I've ever read anything that really um, delves into his like backstory at all. He's just a weird uh, uh, anomaly, and he. He has just existed for too long. He's an SCP. I like that red wave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. So here we go. This is this is where we start to get a little little political with the questions oh, I I'm have, ready. and then we'll open it up for the chat, and then we'll uh, then we'll per perhaps move to the anarchy discussions. Um, so in Lord of the Rings discourse, there's a lot of discussion about will about power levels etc cetera, etc cetera. um like dwarves and men collapsed to the power of the ring as we know a lot of them did at least you know the ring wraiths and then you had the dwarves they were you know spurred on partially by the ring to keep digging and digging until they opened up a big demon and it went bah. right um so do you think from your extensive reading of lord of the rings do you think that uh that like that was like tolkien's intent was like or, or, or the outcome, regardless, was like part of a, of like sort of like a race realisty kind of thing, like a yikesy thing like that. Or do you think it was like more meant to be culture, and then this was sort of like the, via pop culture digesting the movies, they sort of put further fantasy on? Because to me, I've always, I've always felt very um, like mixed about that particular opinion because on one hand reading the books it, it does seem to be um not really fixated on like oh th i mean there's some like lineage shit with like the rightful king mm -hmm. and blah 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 but it's like okay it's fantasy but like as far as people go there's not really a whole lot of like bloodline power really at least not very much but at the same time there are certain parts where it's like okay like the orcs are kind of like they're they're bad, like intrinsically, and that's kind of weird. Um, but I've noticed that, like, I feel like when people talk about Lord of the Rings now, and like just just sort of like cursory analysis, people are like, oh, it's like a whole bunch of race realism. Do you feel like that was the case in the books, or do you feel like it was like more intended to be culture and perhaps wasn't communicated perfectly? I don't even know if I would go as far as to say culture. I definitely don't think there's an intent of like race realism okay. even though you can pull like you're right that there aren't very many um depends on how you want to say this i'll i'll say it like this the big stories lord mm -hmm. of the rings the hobbit um uh, uh baron and luthien um stuff about fanor and and um all of the characters that were supposed to really, really, that we work to empathize with, that like, mm -hmm. you know, that, that he works to make us empathize yeah. with. The protagonists. Um, yeah, yeah, are, uh, yes. Have almost nothing to do with that whatsoever. I, I, there's a common thing in, in fantasy to have, and Lord of the Rings, especially the movies, does this too, where like all of the good guys are white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes orcs a darker colored skin people yeah. makes them seem there's of course like they're the easterlings and the southerners black. which are like a little, this, little bit a little there. a little iffy iffy there yeah, yeah. um but also the fact that like i don't i don't i don't think it's supposed to be related to like uh, our modern conceptions of the east even though the movies kind of play into that a little but yeah, they do. what i really think so like orcs for example hot hot yeah. thing here really quick a little bit of lore melkor a long, long time ago, was really, really frustrated that he couldn't make cool stuff like men and people. He he wanted that godly power, so instead he took elves and he tortured them and and fucked with them until they became the first orcs. Um, Goddamn. So they're not really like trying to make like a culture thing about that. It's kind of hard because that's yeah. not like they're they're he fucked them he destroyed like he he yeah, fucked he with fucked their soul okay. essentially like yeah, he yeah. fucked them up really bad um and 
Um, I though he was a noted francophobe. I'm sorry. Um, uh, what was I? I Francophobia so I don't think... has has recently become a bit of a thing. This is like the third or fourth time people have brought up francophobia. I don't know if I'm, I'm being... a francophobe. Oh my god! <laughs> no, don't say that. Listen, I think there's I think there's a bunch of people who've been testing me to find out if I'm a francophobe, and I'm not, I'm not. I don't... Somebody asked me, came in, what are your thoughts on the French language? And I was like, uh, Franks, fine. get out. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! The Quebecois no. are gonna come cancel me. This, oh shit! This is all satire. This is irony. Nothing is serious here. Okay, Nothing. I haven't. I haven't meant a single. I haven't meant a single word I've said since I've gotten on stream. Oh no! Okay, <laughs> shit. That's too much. No, go back. Go back. All right. Okay. So um, yeah. So I don't think there's really a race or culture real connotation there. Okay. Um. I, I can. I think that it's fine to critique them in this way like to to look at their their you know examples you know mm. why is Lord of the rings have all the good guys as white people that's really weird yeah yeah but like for example like like wood elves and shit don't look like legolas like that's not yeah, what yeah. they were supposed to look like in the books like that's not they're not some like fair-skinned white people they're weird as shit they're, yeah, they're like <laughs> leaves in their hairs and shit like they're like yeah. more like nymphs or something a little bit, yeah. It's very strange. But um I was gonna say that all of the all of the protagonists and stuff that we're supposed to supposed to root for are are mostly supposed to be stories of 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 friendship and love and perseverance and and you know being there for one another like that's the big sam frodo story yeah, is yeah. the friendship and love that they share for each other like that's what that is yeah, and it's camaraderie and and yeah and nobility of spirit and in, in like choosing the right things right. right that's i mean we've got the whole you know the gandalf thing about um so gandalf says a lot of things about you know it's not about you know choosing to kill someone sometimes it's more important to choose you know not to mm -hmm. that it's that you know the pity and love and you know all of these things for each other and you know it's not you know we don't get to decide what time we live in we just have to decide what we do with the time that we have like it's all mm -hmm. none of this is it, it alludes to this sense of 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 you know dynasty and yeah. great power in bloodlines they play into it a little bit with people like aragorn and kings and elrond but like all of that stuff is designed to vanish that's part of like what the story is is the the magic leaving the world why the elves leave and mm. they're sort of weirdly connected to nature in a weird way and and it just being a story of the birth of 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 men of the 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 i mean it is like a british mythos it's the birth mm. of of us being able to choose our own destiny to go and try to you know be good essentially yeah. okay yeah and see that's that's sort of the takeaway that's what i always felt so like weird about the way that people sort of because because there are absolutely fantasy universes like for example one that comes to mind uh, that just like is mind meltingly frustrating on that front is like warhammer warhammer fantasy is just like everything is bloodlines it's like oh i'm the son of a powerful guy which means i also have powerful magic and it's just right. like okay so there's a lot of this like like very fashy like like elements that are just like i mean oh i don't get me wrong i fucking love warhammer too it's just like it, it it's it's really stark and that and in in my experience with lord of the rings it's not very prominent as some people make it out to be on the internet when they're mm. sort of like I don't know. I think sometimes there's a little bit of like a like a, a hipster uh, knee jerk to be like, well, sure. Lord of the Rings, it's, it's got to be more bad than it was. But I do understand, like, of course, I think meta critiques of like casting decisions and stuff like that is totally valid. Yeah, um, and I think obviously, I think can focused make good critiques of the actual writing of Lord of the Rings and how they frame some of it. But I don't think it's ever a goal of the story. Like it's. It's not like our protect. It's not like Harry Potter. You're the 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 you yeah. know the chosen one. You're the you're the none of that stuff. Yeah. Like it's all. If there is someone that's part of a great bloodline, they're usually a little side story. They're never. Yeah. The the, probably the most prominent example is probably Aragorn. But even then, like he's 
a member of a so-called great bloodline of like basically a bunch of people who did jack shit and he's the first one to ever do anything with it like <laughs> his dad is like i don't even remember like some random dude and like <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, what the fuck? Like, and then like Strider is like a bum, like a literal bum for most of the story. He's just like ro roaming around, like eating twigs and like burning things in the woods and just like, oh, this plant's cool. Let me smoke this. And it's just like, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh shit, I got to get my shit together. And then hikes over to, to Gondor. But like literally at first he's like not even known. Like the whole point is that he's like known as like, he's locally known as like some guy who Arranger. comes in. Yeah. Yeah, he comes in from the woods and like is like, "Hey, I got some bunnies for you. You want to trade it for some carrots?" And it's like, "Sure, okay." And then nothing else special. And then like later on, it's kind of revealed that he he's got a little more going on. He's got a a paper yeah, that says, elves, "I can be king." The elves that he was staying with knew. Elrond knew. Um, Elrond's big brain for everyone who does. Really know. early on, yeah. so I know I mentioned this a little bit, but yeah. people, of course, uh, uh, Elrond and and the elves at Rivendell really early on reforge um uh the broken sword mm -hmm. you know the broken sword that cut off sauron's finger yeah. and the ring with it um really early on they reforged that and and aragorn just carries it around and talks about it all the time it's his favorite <laughs> little sword he loves that shit he's he's super excited about it and he wants everyone to know that he has it and that it's really cool and uh so like elves knew and then pretty soon after the story starts he starts filling those shoes a little bit but um yeah it's a little that's probably one of the bigger changes from the movies yeah, but early it's, on, um... he's more like hey listen you got a fever i can make you a tea for that it'll make you feel good <laughs> and i'll tuck you okay. in okay he literally he literally only okay so he says they talk about how he has some like he knows some like elf magic -y stuff to heal people yeah but it's literally just taking the same plant and rubbing it in every wound that he's yeah. seen so what you're saying is he has like <laughs> he has he has daddy energy is what you're saying here he, oh yeah absolute daddy energy i would Fantastic. let aragorn destroy me okay? there you go there we have it that is the that is that is what we that is the, <laughs> the clip the, clip the, and ship it exactly cut it you could put it up on the uh, gay fest you could put it up on the on the out of context but it won't be me out of context this time it's very rare <laughs> um ah it's a weed it is a weed but listen it's very good okay there's lots of okay listen one thing about lord of the rings there are a lot of weeds that are good and it makes me ask some questions okay it makes me ask some questions about our dear friend long uh, bottom Jeff. leaf yeah i got the old long bottom toby leaf. exactly we got there's a lot of different leaves that make you feel really good and 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 gandalf loves that fucking shit so it's true he's just like listen i'm gonna i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go toke and I'll be back in town a bit later <laughs> yeah. for some cheese and bread. He loves hanging out with the hobbits. Like, like that's the cool thing. I don't know. I always love that part. I always love that, like, um, basically Gandalf's just like, dude, the hobbits are cool. I the bet they could sick. help us out. He's like, yeah, they're <laughs> sick. He's like, and everyone else is like, nah, nah, hobbits are annoying. They're like, they just want to eat cheese and, and, and argue about this year's crop. And he's like, nah, but that's <laughs> awesome. Like, they have cool music sometimes and it's like no it sounds like shit and he's like no nah, it's it's really cool just come hang out sometime and then have you sorry yeah no go for it go for it i was just gonna ask have you ever looked into how tolkien described his own politics um someone sent me a a a quote from his letters to his son about uh being an anarchist and i'm just like oh shit comrade tolkien <laughs> he describes it as um anarcho monarchism he he has uh, he doesn't use that word but he says both I, he says either anarchism or monarchism but kind of both of them and he means it in such a strange way and it's hilarious to me he literally says in those letters he's like yeah um people like the way our government is it's all fucked people should just kind of hang out we would be way better if we used names with each other if we were on a name the name basis we knew each other in the community we were hanging out with each other and also there can be a guy who does government stuff. I don't give a shit about him. You know, deal with the other countries. That's yeah. that's your job, but don't bother us. And anyone who says the word government, they have one chance to take it back and then we fucking kill them. Like they're done, <laughs> like it's over. Damn, damn. He goes, he goes An hard. Anarcho-monarcho-Stalinist <laughs> Tolkien. Let's see here. Holy <laughs> shit. It's getting fucking spicy in this, in this, this shit. Well, uh, I, I, I find, uh, God, there's like so much you could do. You could talk about with Tolkien and, and oh, yeah. his disagreements with C.S. Lewis, C.S. Mm -hmm. Lewis, who 
makes me roll my eyes a lot because <laughs> um oh my god oh my god i hate it when people try to say that c.s lewis was like a major philosopher and people say that and i'm just like <laughs> he wrote he wrote like bible uh, fan fiction of the lowest tier oh, I'm, i can't do it no i can't i can't turn this into a c.s lewis dunking on stream listen some say, of his books are good don treader was great okay i will just say in high school i had a teacher who asked me a science teacher who asked me to read his book mere christianity and it is a piece of garbage it is the stu so like bad. it is it it doesn't to call it philosophy it's to debase. It's not even the theology. It's not any. It's nothing. It's, it's nothing. like it's just weird, it's, weak arguments about Christianity. It, it's a it's a early nineteen hundreds Tim Pool mm -hmm. video, is what it is, or maybe <laughs> Prager U even. I don't know. It's that bad. It's pretty bad. All of his books are pretty bad, like that. And yeah. like, there's even like, the thing is like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That whole like series is fucking cool in some cases, but it always gets derailed by just raw ham-fisted bible where you're just like oh, oh my yeah. god it's like it's like you they're like oh we sailed across a sea that's made of like multicolored flowers and then we arrived at a mountain and then jesus appeared and he was like i'm the yeah. best go on back <laughs> go have fun you should follow me and then i'm just like F what the fuck you were like going into like cosmic shit and then it's just jesus mm -hmm. is like yeah not nah, Turn around, go back, go have fun being Jesus and or following Jesus and you know not having not fucking and whatever. I'm just like Jesus fucking Christ, get get this man away from me. Um, that is, yeah, it's the opposite of that, which I really like about Tolkien and his mythology, which it is very clearly religious inspired, mm -hmm. like gods and angels and creating of the the creation of the universe and the world and and like all of it is very clearly like. You can tell his religion is, is impacted. It's written like a like a like an early Old Testament, you know, yeah. writing. But it's not like no one in Lord of the Rings is like, oh God, and there's there's the Jesus character right there. Oh, yeah. he died. Oh, and he's some back people try to do that to Gandalf, but it's totally unfair. It's not, totally it's unfair. The, the yeah. only same thing is that he came back he three died. days later. Yeah. That's it. Well, it's yeah. only three days. It's it's literally just after some time. It's yeah, a significant they period made of time. It like, them. Yeah, like I think in the movies they said it was like approximately that. But in the movies, the time gets the time gets dilated so much because like yeah. it's just like there's these scenes. They have like three scenes of like the Uruk High like carrying Merry and Pippin around, and it's just like oh they ran across like the equivalent of like like running across <laughs> like America in like in the movie. It's like oh they did this for like two hours like running from one place where they kidnapped them to like literally bit, all the yeah. way across a continent. And in the movies, <laughs> just like cut. And then they're like, da, 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 da. and it's like in the books, it's like, they're getting carried around in burlap sacks for like a week. And then they finally managed to slip away. And it's just like, yeah. Like for example, the, the, um, Bilbo leaving and Gandalf entrusting Frodo with the ring and then him going to read about it and then coming back is like 10 plus years. Yeah, it takes fucking like, forever. It, but it feels like, it feels like Gandalf rode to Gondor in like a weekend and came back and was like, dude, where's the fuck, where's, this, where's the ring? But And and you know what's funny? This is, <laughs> this is like really silly and unrelated, but this is something I can actually like sympathize with, with the movie makers, is that like travel time and travel distance is one of the hardest things for me to have, to have written into fantasy. And like some people are really good with it. But for me, I was like, fuck, it's really hard for me to like draw a map and actually figure out how long would it take to go from my big old city I have over here to the lake over here without it feeling like, aha, like it's like a video game, like hop, skip and a jump and you're there. Like, right. it's like, no, I want it to feel like you're actually, it's very difficult to do. So I, I get it. I get it. They, you know, people think that horses go way faster than they do. Like you ride a horse. It's going to take like, like, I think part of it is just because we like, we live in the age of cars and we're just like, Oh yeah, you yeah. could, you could take a car and drive for a few hours and you'll be like somewhere else in your state. And it's like, no, on a horse, it would take you the entire day to go to another city in your state for most people. Like you'd be, you'd need to stay every time you want to go to the neighboring town. You got to stay somewhere in an inn or some shit. Like it's totally different. Yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, okay. So now if you're cool with it, uh, we'll open it up to the chat to, to pelt you with some um some questions. all right I'm... chat whip up the lord of the rings questions before we move on to politics 
Uh, earlier, someone asked what I thought of Moorcock, and uh, yes, please. There we go. Okay, Moorcock. All right, I get. It. Wait. I... Okay, <laughs> that was. I think I said they had a base name, but um, but I think your answer was better. All right, so here's one. Uh, what PS3 Lord of the Rings games do you recommend? Uh, PS3. There was okay, so. I liked playing, even if it's a little goofy, I like like lore wise goofy, because of course they are. I liked the um uh the the was it Shadow of Mordor? Okay. Um is that what it's called? Hold on, I don't wanna get this wrong. Is there were the two. One? And I only played the first one. Yeah, so Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, and then the second one was Middle Earth Shadow of War, but I don't know if that came out on the PS3 or PS4. Mm. Um uh why has there never been a good Lord of the Rings MMORPG? Because all MMORPGs are bad. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. I like WoW. I'm, I'm so bad. Like, I, I cannot find fun in them. I, I, lots of love to anyone who enjoys them. But they, I'm so unhappy at playing any of them. Are they all, they're all the same thing. Walk here, kill this, take this, take it yeah. to somebody else. Okay. But I understand that getting to like the cool raid stuff at the end of those is where the fun is supposed to be. Well, hold on a second now. You're getting a little ahead of yourself here. Now, hold uh, hold on. I have to do this. There's too many WoW fans in my audience, including right. myself. Okay. Um, but but um, so Cutter Mike. Yeah. <laughs> you've you've made some enemies. Um, no, I'm kidding. Fair. But um, but but here's the thing. Um, MMOs are. The game, the only, the, the good gameplay in MMOs is at the top end. You're correct about that. However, most MMOs are, are, exist for the same reason that I think, I would assume the same underlying things that, for, as to why you're into Lord of the Rings lore. For me, I like World of Warcraft because the lore is just bonkers deep. And of course, there's all kinds of inconsistencies because it's not like, it's a, a corporate product now, and there's all kinds of other products, problems. But nonetheless, it's, there's all kinds of lore. There's just shit tons of amazing stuff that you can dig into, all these little amazing stories and different writers who came in. And so that's why I like it. The, the core gameplay is not, like, the most enveloping, although sure. I will say that the raid stuff is its own thing. So for me, there's the lore is the one thing that, that keeps me, uh, like, into that universe and the way that you can just... Yeah, some of the tasks are repetitive, but you're going and you're experiencing these stories and, and you're like, it's just a scale that's really huge. And there's these mythologies that exist within the game and there's little details buried here and there. And it's the same kind of thing that makes me like Lord of the Rings. So maybe, maybe that could be something that, uh, that I would, I don't think I would want to convince you to play MMOs, but it might help you understand the people who do like MMOs. A lot of people are really I, addicted to the lore. Oh, totally. And I will yeah. say, Anytime I've played them, it has been purely for that. Like, yeah, yeah. I, but then I, it, it wanes. My, yeah. my attention goes elsewhere, and That's I fair. say, I'm not paying fifteen dollars a month for this. Yeah. Now, see, the real secret is to be like me, where I uh, don't pay for WoW. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I sell things on the auction house, um, and while I'm doing reading or listening or research for stream. I'll just grind out picking flowers. Uh, I basically Strider in Lord of the Rings. I go out into the woods. Based. I pick random flowers. I bring them into town. And I go, will you give me some wow time for this? And people go, sure. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's cool. It's cool. It's kind of um, like how I played Skyrim. Yeah, yeah. Just go pick some flowers and then go make shit I out of it. I have a problem with, with, with the Elder Scrolls games and picking oh, up everything yeah. that I see. Like, I'm just like a flower. I'm there. Oh, I don't even know what this flower does. I just want it. Give me it. Like, pick, 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 pick. <laughs> Yeah, I have an addiction in games too. Um, picking flowers and fishing. Fishing, um, a fishing mini game. Mm -hmm. Every game needs a fishing mini game. It's the one thing that will <laughs> never be out of place in any game. Like I don't care what the game is. Like you put a fishing mini game in, I'm gonna like it. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Also, there's some new stuff in the new WoW expansion that are pretty, pretty. Like they've actually made some steps forward, which is pretty cool. Um, as far okay. as gameplay is concerned. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. So, any other questions from chat? Any other lore questions from chat? I had I found I saw one a minute ago that I okay. saved because I wanted to answer it, which Excellent. was why does an elf have to give up their lifespan to be in love with a human? And the answer is they don't. Um, the misconception comes from uh, Arwen and Aragorn. So um, in Lord of the Rings, uh, all the elves are leaving. Um, they say that their time here is done. They have to leave. They're going to peace out. They're done. They're, they're, 
their time here is done and it's supposed to be the birth of the age of men so it's the like age of eldar the time of the eldar or whatever before then and um so as i said before elves are sort of like super connected to nature and their connection to nature is also in relationship to the valar um it's very strange hard to explain um but basically all of that like magic y stuff is kind of disappearing and with it so does like the elves um uh uh, uh never ending lifespan their 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 immortality essentially mm -hmm. um and as such what they have to do what what's, what comes next is either die here in middle or earth or go to valinor and hang out with the valar until um until they're done essentially okay. um so when arwen it wants to stay it's it's only because that sort of last light of the elves is leaving and so she essentially becomes like weirdly pseudo human but not really because she still lives really long yeah it, it reduces the immortality but like you get long life i mean the life times um, is kind of strange in lord of the rings anyway because like yeah uh some humans live for a fucking crazy long time um like aragorn does but mm -hmm. that's nothing compared to elves and dwarves right. live like 300 fucking years but hobbits only live like 112 or something I can't hundreds remember. like a weirdly long yeah, for them yeah, to for, for them. like that was the whole thing about bilbo being uh uh 11 t1 or whatever like yeah. is is uh it's 11 t first yeah yeah they don't expect that um Ants are super old. Yeah, but they call they call Gandalf young master. Like they're old as shit. <laughs> they're real old. So here's um, a question from Rakasan from earlier. Um, I think I took this one down actually. Um, do you know or do you have any insight into why Tolkien um like borrowed a lot of names and stuff from like specifically Norse mythology? Um, I feel like I I have a good idea of that. But if you could answer that question, that'd be great. Well, so. This, this, the, the, the mythos of Lord of the Rings, the, the, the Lord of the Rings universe is so, sort of supposed to be a pseudo, um, have some pseudo relationships to modern, the modern world. So he sort of pulls from certain uh, uh, languages and names for things that he saw as like sort of pseudo related, but not really like that directly related. Mm -hmm. It's not like dwarves became like, like, like Nordic or whatever. Like it's not yeah. that, but it's sort of, it's that kind of like, he was a linguist, he wrote this kind of stuff. So he just kind of pulled, um, inspiration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's as far as I understand. Who there might be think started more to the... it. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. It's okay. Uh, who do you think started the feud between the elves and the dwarves? Or do you know? Uh, the elves and dwarf stuff is weird because depending on what point you're talking about it do you think they're just depends. racist to each other well there were alliances before and then they all kind of got broken and everyone's kind of segmented i don't know if there was um i don't remember a, a an original um I don't know what, what drove them apart originally, but. Um, well, there we have it. It's still a mystery. I, I'll have to look that up, see if I can find anything good for that. You're going to, now you're going to reenact the scene of, of Gandalf riding the horse and going like looking at all the books. <laughs> and be like, oh, I'll descend into darkness. Yeah. Go down into the bottom. There's like a bunch of wax candles <laughs> and shit. Uh, should Eowyn have married Faramir or should she have joined Aragorn and Arwen's polycule? Mm, good question. You're you're asking the question too specifically. Both her and Faramir should have joined joined the the polycule. I don't know why you're leaving Faramir out. It's Faramir's true. a babe. Have you seen yeah. him? Oh my god, yeah. he can kill me whenever he wants. And also, I mean, <laughs> dude's a dude's a skilled ass hunter. You know, that's that's right? a nice talent. Yeah, he can provide and everything. And yeah. he has daddy issues. <laughs> true. I mean, j completely <laughs> justly too. Fuck Denethor. Oh, his, yeah, Denethor, Denethor is, is such an shit. asshole. Like, gotta be the, my least favorite character in all of Lord of the Rings. What a piece of shit. Faramir also didn't succumb to the ring. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he didn't have it for very long, to be fair. Look at Faramir's note. What the <laughs> fuck gave that shit? <laughs> Oh my god. All right, it's getting very horny in chat now. All right. <laughs> Seriously. Is there a character that everyone hates out of spite in Lord of the Rings? Yeah, f I think we just revealed that. Denethor. Fuck Denethor. <laughs> that guy is such an asshole. There's like, holy shit. What a piece of shit. He even grossly eats that tomato in the movie. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that song, though. Yeah. I mean, it's good, but he fucking ate that. that he ate that tomato. Wait, did I say orange? Tomato. I meant tomato. He no, you said, you said tomato. Okay, yeah. He eats a fucking tomato and just, like, spits it all over his face. I'm like, dude, fuck you. You're so bad. Holy shit. Anyway. Worm Tongue is a total douche, but Worm Tongue, both in the movies and in the books, kills Saruman. Yeah. So, and Saruman totally doesn't, like, he he's the one that goes and, like, enslaves all the hobbits. And yeah. Oh, and yeah, that's not even in the movies. People forget about that part. They allude to it with the, 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 the little seeing mirror that galadriel has yeah um the shire yeah. is on fire and stuff, basically for people who don't know uh in the lord of the rings books there's more after the crowning of aragorn and all that shit they go back to the the shire and it's totally fucked like completely and utterly fucked so basically while they're busy like fighting a big war uh like saruman and the 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 urukai go and fuck up the shire and put turn all the hobbits into slaves and stuff and then they have to go kick their ass and it sucks um yeah it's wild it's actually really kind of a cool part in the book but um and and i think if i remember correctly oh yeah he gets he gets uh saruman gets killed by worm tongue but then worm tongue gets killed by some hobbit guards which is kind of like cool like you're like oh shit the hobbits can actually kick ass sometimes yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't remember them killing Wormtongue, but that's I thought they killed right. him on his way out of the Shire. Oh, like he's trying to run away. I and totally like, believe it. And they just, beat I just, him with sticks and stuff. I just didn't, I just didn't hold on to that information. I totally believe you. Yeah. Um, yeah. what was I? Um, I was gonna say something about Sauron. Um, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, All right. All right. Well, uh, I think that's other... most of the questions that we've gotten here. Oh, why is he a floating eye? Um, I, I think because he got just... beat up. Yeah, his body got blown up. <laughs> I think that's. I think the floating floating eye thing is just like authorial like license. Like he's just like you. He's an eye. I mean, in the books, yeah, in the books it says all that's left is a lidless eye, and when you're talking about like an angel, like it's. it's very, however, that's gonna... very seraph seraphim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah what are your the favorite Rainbow characters? Yeah. So, oh yeah, he totally did. Um, what are your favorite characters? Uh, um, I. No, Merry and Pippin are, they're related. They don't fuck. Stop it. <laughs> How did he corrupt the Palantirs? He didn't corrupt them. They're singing stones. You look into them and you like fuck with each other. But it's like an unencrypted line. Anybody can listen in. Yeah. And also you kind of show weird things with it. And he's really powerful. It's really weird. He's super magical. But my favorite character depends. But I'm really partial to Gandalf. Okay, Gandalf I, I, yeah. I really like Gandalf a lot. But aside from that, probably sam that's fair yeah let me think i mean i've always really liked gandalf i mean gandalf mm -hmm. is just i mean he's so good like in every way mm -hmm. you're just like oh my god i wish gandalf was my grandpa um and i don't know though like i also hmm i used to be like a big legolas fan because i always thought bows were cool but as time has gone on i've been more like oh, i kind of just like the bow mostly like his character isn't like a legless around him isn't important it's not all that and that feels kind of like lame for a favorite character um yeah i don't know i think i'd have to probably go with gandalf too he gandalf is just so he's so cool he's so all-around awesome gray or white why did the actor that played sam say he didn't suck i thought he did fine no yeah Sean, uh, fine. uh not sean bean what's his name fuck um i know what you're talking about sean astin sean austin yeah or astin yeah um, cool. you know, yeah but both yeah. Yeah, um, there's a lot of fucking great actors in those films. It was actually amazing, like, how many good mm -hmm. actors there were. Fucking Boromir nailed it. That's Sean Bean. Yeah. Died excellently. Yeah. Oh, incredible. Like, okay, what a great... Honestly, though, I cry. Like, every time I watch him <laughs> and he said that he would have followed Aragorn, oh, swoon. Oh. Yeah, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And the thing is, like, Boromir in the books, like, here's the thing. Boromir in the movies is already you can kind of like get behind him. you're like oh yeah I see where he's going with this he's really frustrated and like he's 
kind of a spoiled baby and doesn't really also still has daddy issues still has daddy issues exactly but in the books boromir is like he's really cool you really like boromir by the time you get to that point you're like what dude what the fuck are you doing why are you trying to take the ring but you're also like but i like you why are you doing a bad thing in the movies it's more like okay yeah he's kind of an asshole but in the books it's like fuck like we lost a friend so yeah yeah um all right cool uh let's see was there any other questions here it doesn't look like it oh, somebody's asking me what the chud roll is that's not a lord of the rings question you'll find out if you ever get the chud roll is the hobbit supposed to read like a bedtime story yes. um yeah it's kind a children's of story. yeah yeah it's literally i i believe if i'm if i'm not mistaken it was partially directly written but also partially stories he told to his kids okay like I, I think that it was literally like episodic stories he told to his kids. I'm pretty sure. That makes sense. Baron a groomer? No. <laughs> he was based. Literally. Okay. I don't so know about um, this guy. This is one part of the story I don't know much about. Uh, Baron and Luthien. So. Um, Drop it, Angel. Baron, Baron was tasked. Well, Baron liked Luthien and wanted to be with Luthien. And Luthien's dad, I think, told Baron to steal a Cimmeril from Morgoth. Melkor. Same person. Yeah. Um, and that's like an impossible task, essentially you know, go steal from the angel, um, the big dark angel. And, uh, for, for, then you can wed my daughter essentially. And yeah, go do the suicide mission and you can marry my daughter. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. And, um, if you look on Tolkien and his wife's grave, Tolkien says Baron and his wife says Luthien. Okay, so, yeah, not a groomer. Okay. Um, <laughs> another question. Glorfindel dies fighting a Balrog in the ancient elf kingdom, and he's reborn in Rivendell. Uh, oh, where'd it go? Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, hmm. Oh, no, where'd it go? I can't see it. Oh, here it is. God damn it. This chat is killing me right now. Why? Okay, Uh, he's brought back, and it has parallels to Gandalf's rebirth. What's up with that, if you know? I'm not super familiar with that. No. Uh, Why is it muting you? What the fuck? Hmm. It's okay, Angel Bright. We got the question. Ah, was Valinor functionally an elven ethnostate? <laughs> no, it was where the Valar lived. So it's a Valar ethnostate. Sort of. It's it's an angel ethnostate that the angels are allowed into, and then rumored that 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 um. Gimli also got in. And then, of course, Frodo and... That's the Grey Havens, right? Bilbo. Uh, or that's like where yes. it's located. Okay. Also, based song featuring Annie Lennox. Good one. All right. Okay, so I think at this point, it's a good time to begin the shift over to the politics, which I, I 